Paul was an apostle. Not one of the original twelve. And so his credentials were sometimes called into question because he hadn't personally walked those dusty roads with the Messiah. And so once in a while, somebody would say, who do you think you are? I don't know if you've ever said that to someone. Well, Paul begins this letter by laying claim to this title, this role in the church, that of apostle. And an apostle by this time had already come to be those who were, well, Christians who got it. Not Christians who were better than anybody else. Christians who understood what the purpose of the church was. So, Paul had heard, well, you hear it for yourself. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are lacking in no spiritual gift. Christ will strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by him. You were called into the fellowship of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, right away, we know two things. First, that Paul has some authority, that he has claimed. He has been recognized by other Christians, principally the council in Jerusalem, as having an authentic ministry to the Gentiles. That was his vocation. We know that Paul had a relationship with these people. He knew about them. He knew <coughs> who they were. He knew their strengths and their weaknesses. And he lifts them up as saying, look, you are worthy of my affection. And more importantly, you're worthy of God. Then, then it gets good. Because Paul has a way in the Greek style of teaching of drawing you in and letting you think, okay, this is going to be a nice fluffy letter. You know, how's your mom? And, you know, those kind of things. But he, he, he said to them, having just lifted them up, having just said to them, you have got everything you need to be successful, to be authentic, to be who God called you to be. And then he drops the hammer. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, right away, Paul is claiming that what he is about to say isn't his opinion. He is offering something in the name of Christ. That's serious for Paul. This is not some fluffy opinion piece that you read in the op-ed section of the paper. This is somebody who says, here it is, you know what to do with it. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the name and same mind and same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Peter, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that none of you can say you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the house of Stephanas. Beyond that, I don't think I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. So, Paul has already laid out his credentials. This is who I am. This is why I'm writing. He's already spelled out that these are people, the church in Corinth, are people who have everything that God has given Paul. Faith, power, knowledge. But then he says, but there's something wrong. Because he says something that we don't have much experience with. Conflict. <laughs> now, if you know anything about Corinth, and you could fly there today, Corinth is still a city on the Peloponnesian Isthmus. Back in Paul's time, it was one of those happening kind of places. Anything and everything was for sale. It was a place that if you wanted something, you'd get it there. If they didn't have it, they'd make it up. In this cosmopolitan setting, though, the word of God had come and it had reached people who were used to new ideas and new, you know, new ways of looking at the world. And Paul had brought this new way of looking at the world, namely that God is with them and God loves them. And some some in the church had said, well, I was in the first class, so that makes me better than everybody who came after. <laughs> or, before Jesus, I was up here. So therefore, because I'm a Christian, I'm still up there. And if you were a slave before Paul got here, you're still down there. Then there were those who said, it's okay. All, all, it's all good. Except <clears throat> I was baptized by Paul. Mm -hmm. Or I am of the school of Apollos. Or <laughs> I came to know Jesus through the work of Bob. That's a translation. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm a follower and an adherent of Jesus. What's wrong with that? The problem is people thought that Jesus could be possessed as if he were a, just another faction within the church. So all of this, this controversy, this buying for factions, this taking a little bit of information and <coughs> ex 
expanding it to mean almost anything. Paul is addressing the human condition. How many times in your life have you said,